Hello everybody and welcome back to another Academy video. In today's video we will take a look at stored cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. We will do that through a very simple lab that will show us how a stored cross-site scripting attack could look. But first of all, what is cross-site scripting and what is stored cross-site scripting? So we all know that cross-site scripting is um, where we make some input, that is some malicious JavaScript that gets executed on a client. And stored cross-site scripting is a variant on that where our malicious input gets stored in the application itself. And then that data gets pulled from the application onto a page. Now, what does that mean? Well, we can make some malicious input that gets stored. And from that point, we as the attacker, we are kind of disconnected from the whole thing because now any user that views a page that pulls that data will see our malicious input. That means that a stored cross-site scripting attack can be very dangerous because for a very big company, for example, where thousands of users are visiting a page, it could be that a one single cross-site scripting injection can result in uh, XSS running on thousands of users' computers at in an hour or something like that. So okay. Stored cross-head scripting is dangerous. Let's quickly look at a small lab so we can see how it all works. And in this Portswigger lab, we have a blog. Blogs are very common and blogs have blog posts. When we click on one of these posts, we can see that there is a comment section. And we can comment our own comments, other people can view our comments, and that's a fun way to interact with the community. However, our comments are obviously stored in a database somewhere in the application and are then shown to everybody who visits this blog post. So in this case, let's make a, a quick comment here. This is a test comment. Um, and if we post that, we see that, okay, that shows up. Great. What happens now if we submit something malicious here? If we, for example, submit some script tags with an alert document.domain. What will that do? Well, our comment now gets shown on this blog post to every user and boom, this XSS works and gets executed. So now every user that visits this blog post on this blog will get this XSS. Now in real life, attackers will obviously not put an alert there, uh, which is people see that very quickly, but they will do something malicious, such as, for example, pulling your cookies um, and hijacking your session cookies. Now on a big website, if thousands of users were to visit this page, uh, visit this blog post, then the attackers could within hours hijack the sessions of thousands of users, which is obviously very, very dangerous. And that is how a simple stored cross-site scripting attack works. Now, luckily for us, um, the protectors or the ethical hackers, um, stored cross-site scripting is Sim, uh, finding a stored cross-site scripting attack is similar to finding uh, other types of cross-site scripting. We are pretty much looking at some user input that will then go through the application and is then shown on the page somewhere to a user. So we are analyzing data flows through the application and by seeing where our user input gets used, we can then check, okay, is this properly sanitized or might an XSS attack be possible here? Now that was uh, my video for this week for the Academy. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked the video, like it and comment down below what kind of things you would like to see us explain in these videos. This was a very simple lab, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Take care.